and I've been asked to speak on the most conservative end of the treatment spectrum in first-line metastatic renal cell carcinoma. So we've heard already at this meeting that renal cell carcinoma is a heterogeneous disease. There are nine histopathological subtypes, but increasingly we're recognising that within those histopathological subtypes and furthermore within individual patients, there's marked genomic variation and the presence of, of tumour heterogeneity. And it seems likely that the histopathological variation and genomic variation gives rise to diverse biological behaviour in this disease. And that translates into the clinic. Um, and this, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence for differing um, sub clinical subsets of patients, those with an aggressive tempo of, of disease and those with a very indolent pace of disease, particularly those patients with lung metastases only. Although there have been huge advances in the systemic treatment for metastatic renal cell carcinoma, treatments remain palliative and therefore chronic, and they're moderately toxic. And so our practice, at least in the UK, has been to defer drug therapy until there is a clinically relevant burden of disease. And the main argument for this has been from the point of view of patient quality of life. And, and this is a practice which I think is, is widespread in other tumour types as well. But there is actually very little evidence to tell us that this is a safe approach. In indolent lymphoma, there is prospective evidence for a watchful waiting approach. But the difference between indolent lymphoma and renal cell carcinoma is that rituximab is relatively non-toxic. It has been suggested from a randomised discontinuation trial of serafinib that patients are not disadvantaged by a brief time off treatment. But we wanted to, to try and more formally evaluate our practice, and we particularly wanted to do this in the kinase inhibitor era. And so our starting point was looking at patients who'd been treated with sinitinib between 2005 and 2010 at the Royal Marsden and at Guy's and St. Thomas's Hospital. And within that group of sinitinib-treated patients, we identified those who had had a planned period of observation prior to kinase inhibitor therapy because of asymptomatic or slowly progressive disease. And our primary aim was to determine the progression-free survival or clinical outcomes of those patients once they actually started first-line systemic therapy. It was a very simple study schema. We retrospectively identified patients who'd been diagnosed with metastatic disease and in who there had been a clinical decision to observe initially. Um, that, that was 62 patients out of about 200 treated with sinitinib. We wanted to measure the observation period and then look at the progression-free survival and overall survival of those patients once they'd started treatment. And although we looked at patients treated with sinitinib in that time period, some of these patients had previously had been treated with interferon after, after a period of observation. The study cohort was very typical for an advanced renal cell carcinoma population, mostly male patients, mostly had clear cell carcinoma, and the mean age at diagnosis was 57 years. About half had had metastasectomy at some point and radiotherapy, and not surprisingly, almost all were in the favourable risk group as defined by MSKCC score. And I should say also that almost all of these patients had had a nephrectomy and an interval between curative surgery and the diagnosis of metastatic disease. Progression of disease on imaging or clinician anxiety was the most common reason that treatment was initiated. And a third of patients developed symptoms from their disease and, and were started on treatment for that reason. Here, the, the time on observation varied very widely. Um, but the average time on, obs on observation for these patients was, was 18 months. 
I was somewhat surprised to see the difference um, in observation time between sinitinib and interferon. I would have thought with the advent of a new effective treatment, there would have been more enthusiasm for starting treatment earlier. And I can't easily explain these uh, figures, but that is one of the limitations of a, of a retrospective review. The clinical outcomes for these patients were, were reassuring. The median progression-free survival time for patients on sinitinib, 39 patients, was nine months, and for interferon was 6.7 months. And overall, the median progression-free survival was nine months. And the overall survival data also was, was comparable for this general population. So overall, there was a median overall survival of 25 months. And particularly in the interferon group, there was a very prolonged survival. But again, this is a retrospective review, clearly limited by, by selection. A brief comment about toxicity from sinitinib. It was very common. And actually, hospital admission for sinitinib-related toxicity was required in 13% of patients. And most patients ended up having a dose reduction for toxicity. So in this selected cohort of patients with indolent, favourable and, or intermediate prognosis metastatic renal cell carcinoma, first-line systemic therapy was deferred by a mean of over one year. And once patients started on sinitinib treatment, the median progression-free survival and overall survival times were comparable to those observed in the larger prospective trials of sinitinib. This is a retrospective analysis. The confidence intervals for the data were very wide, and it's impossible to exclude selection bias. And I think although we can cautiously conclude that in this particular group of patients, deferring therapy seems a reasonable practice, we aren't in any way enlightened as to what defines that group of patients. And for this reason, we think that prospective evaluation of surveillance as a treatment strategy is, is critical. And we hope that it might help us to define that group of patients for whom delayed systemic therapy is ideal. And I think the, the, the major challenge of treating um, metastatic renal cell carcinoma exists in this treatment strategy, that we have no molecular means by which to select patients for treatment. We've assumed that deferring systemic therapy ha will have a positive impact on quality of life, but it's possible that patient anxiety from not having treatment might have the opposite effect. And so studying this prospectively would allow longitudinal assessment of quality of life. And it might allow us to perform some of that much needed translational research, not only with tissue collection, but um, looking for predictive biomarkers with less invasive sampling means. Importantly, most developed countries are facing a situation of drug rationing, and the strategy of observing patients in this population might have significant health economic benefits. And for all of these reasons, we wholly support a prospect of observational study which is currently recruiting and being led by Dr. Rennie. Thank you for your time and to my co-investigators and colleagues at the Royal Marsden Hospital and at Guy's and St Thomas's and thank you for the opportunity to speak today.